And if I you're mean, like me, I'll just break it in the first magazine. Somehow. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. hands, the cursed hands. Uh, Everyone will run it great. And then great. I touch it. And it's just like pass hey. it to Davey. And <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 93 of For the Love of Guns. My name is Jason Schaller, and I'm so pleased to have you here on Team Banch as we talk to Zach and Dave from Matador Arms. Now, these are some really super funny guys. I had a ball interviewing them. And I think you're going to love this interview because, guys, they're funny. They're, they're great guys. So before we talk to Zach and Dave, it's time to pay the bills. And this episode is brought to you by Falco Holsters. Look, everybody, if you're going to carry a gun, you need a holster, right? And, well, you don't want just any holster. You want a good quality holster. That's why I like Falco Holsters. And I just got two holsters in from them. These are the Cheetahs. Um, I have another Cheetah that has the wings off of it. But these are amazing. I'm sorry for those of you on the audio side, but it's a black holster with blue stitching. And I got blue edges put on this thing. This is how much you can customize these holsters. And the other one, sorry, it's outside of my reach. But I, they even took the, the Rogue Banshee symbol and etched it on there. Super cool stuff. So go check out Falco holsters and use the checkout code Banshee to save 10%. Look, Falco holsters can make a holster for any gun, every budget, without sacrificing quality. And that's why I like them, is because of the quality. Go check them out. Now, this is also brought to you by Freedom Crew University. Look, are you sick of build content being taken down for firearms? I know I am because, well, I create some of this stuff. Well, over at Freedom Crew University, we have, well, the freedom to bring you that content. Go check out Freedom Crew University because you have the best builders on the internet. We come together to deliver the content that you've known, trust, and love. Check out Freedom Crew University. Now with the bills paid, let's talk to Zach and Dave. Guys, tell me about your love of guns. I'm Zach Gaden, uh, the president and CEO of Matador Arms. Um, what's really cool, though, is that this is my brother-in-law, uh, <laughs> David Borges, which he'll he'll do his intro as well. But uh, Zach Gaden, uh, former Marine, uh, yuck, um, and that was my ten minutes of fame until now. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, simple What's guy, that? simple business, um, and just loving life. New family man. That's a new highlight. And awesome. I get to work with my brother-in-law here, and I'll let him take the torch. Um, my name's Dave. I was also a Marine, uh, so we, we have that in common. Uh, he left out the part where he went and did cool stuff for the State Department <laughs> and uh, a whole la laundry list of cooler <laughs> qualifications than, than I have. Um, I got out and uh, went to a motorcycle school, ended working for uh, P80, and that's kind of how I got into the industry, and, and here, here we awesome. are today. Well, P80 is a very good, uh, a good friend of the channel since I do a lot of gun builds. Um, mm -hmm. And I've also had some of my content taken down because of gun builds. But anyways, both of you, thank you so much for your service. It's great to have, well, Absolutely. a couple of jarheads join me today to talk about guns. <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, I mean what, what's better than that is have Marines sit here talking about guns today. It's, oh, yeah. It's our only qualification. Yeah, I was about to say. It's <laughs> Other than being a family man, that's, uh, that's all I got. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm going to loosen us up a little bit more. I, I warned you guys I was going to do this to you. It's something brand new. First time in this podcast. It's called Ask the AI. So I went out to chat GPT and asked it a couple of questions. And the, uh, the first question I asked it was, in 50 words or less, explain why 9mm is the best caliber for a gun. So what do you guys think? Nine, why do you think nine millimeters is the best caliber for a gun? <laughs> most, most commonly available round. Uh, okay. So it's uh, an affordable round. It's still a very lethal round, uh, 150. So for home defense, property defense, um, there's there's not really a better option. If uh, shit hits the fan, uh, you, you're you well, well equipped with a nine mil. That's yeah. my answer and davy's stealing all the bullet points uh but yeah the versatility <laughs> of that round i think uh personally is probably my go-to point um and it's also one of those favorite conversations where 
you know, you're at the gun shop, what is the best uh, round, you know, for any of the following points? And uh, it's always that that close up, I feel like, between that nine mil or that version, whatever it may be, um, special round of nine mil that uh, is always up against the 45 and X, Y, and Z. And it's just a great topic, but I'm glad chat people. Uh, what is it? G G. G well, I want to know what yeah, 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 I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's so hard to get that one out, right? I mean, yeah. really, you, you can just call it like, I don't know, chat. give it a name other than this <laughs> yeah. chat GPT thing, right? GPT, so got it. Yeah. The, the answer that the computer gave was, it's difficult to definitively declare any caliber the best as, as it ultimately depends on the intended use and personal preference. However, nice. Nine millimeter is a popular choice due to its manageable recoil, availability, and effectiveness in self-defensive scenarios. Super awesome. Well, hey, I, I got close. Well, <laughs> yeah. was, hey. The reason why I brought up the whole like conversation at the gun store type thing is because I'll probably get backlash for this. But whenever this question comes up just directly without chat GPT involved, I always go for 22 personally, uh, <laughs> yeah. just because of my control, my, I mean, I'm only going to be engaging somebody. I'm assuming at 25 yards, nothing more really, uh, especially here on my property and things like that. But uh, I'm a 22 guy. I don't know how many people <laughs> out there are like that, but 22, that's where well, I'm at. I love, you see, I love 22s. There, there, there's just nothing like a 22, Thank right? You. I mean, it's, it's, it's just so much fun. You know, it, it takes me back to, you know, when I started learning how to shoot when I was a kid, uh, I literally still have the gun I learned how to shoot on. It was a Smith & Wesson Model 41. Nice. Um, and um, that gun went missing in my mom's basement. And one year I, when I was back east, because she lives in Pennsylvania, I went back and I found the gun, right? It was, in, it was locked up in this safe that was like in this pile somewhere. Um, Oddly enough, this thing has been lost for a while. It, almost no rust, so I must have oiled the crap out of that thing when I put it away. Um, and I brought it back. And uh, my wife and I were out shooting plates. And, um, you know, she she had never shot that gun before. And that gun, she, she, she runs this rack of plates, and she just turns around and she starts laughing. And I'm like, what? She goes, I didn't aim at any of those. She goes, this gun just figures out what you want to shoot and the bullet just shows up. And <laughs> she goes, right. yeah. and there's no recoil. <laughs> yeah, 22 for life. Well, and so, <laughs> yeah. for us, they are a lot of fun. A lot shoot. of fun. And you could just buy a bucket of ammo. Exactly. You know? so you yeah. Camping, yeah. You play all day long. All I'm hearing is a bunch of wins here. A bunch of wins. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next question I asked it, what is the top advantage of a bufferless AR-15 upper? And when I asked that, I was specifically thinking of this, which you guys know about. Oh, yeah. Which is the Monco 9. Yes, sir. So what do you think the top advantage of a bufferless AR-15 upper is? I think me personally on this one, um, right off the bat, is just the fact that if you have some kind of folder or if you're, depending on your work or what you're doing, maybe this is... Uh, utilized in a very confined space, you can shoot it with a collapsed buttstock or a folder or no buttstock at all. And that, to me, I think is a huge, huge, huge advantage. Uh, even suppress not having too many issues uh, or, or any issues of that pattern. Can you hear my daughter in the background? Oh yeah, it's <laughs> the little one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, See, by the way, we're both new new parents. Yeah, new parents. So. Man, you guys, you guys don't do anything apart from each. Well, I guess there was a couple of things you do apart from each other, but uh, you guys are just kind of in sync there. Absolutely, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, I guess just being able to shoot with a, a folded stock um, is a huge bonus. Whether you're, you're moving in and out of vehicles or or whatever, I don't really think there's any other added. Yeah, that's it uh, looks gangster. I mean, that's yeah, uh, it, it does. It does. <laughs> yeah. So the answer that chat GPT gave was compact size. Bufferless AR-15 uppers allow for more compact and streamlined design compared to traditional AR-15 uppers. This can be beneficial for shooters who want to want a more lightweight and maneuverable firearm, especially in close quarters or tactical solution uh, situations. 
Yep, yeah, absolutely. I'm Chat telling GBT you. Is on I'm it, just dude. on it. Yeah, it's it's trust me. It, it's it's <laughs> on it. Oh, um, let's see here. And the last question I asked it was, "What is the top reason someone would someone would want to turn off an adjustable muzzle brake?" And when I was thinking of this product right here, which is the regulator, which I absolutely love this product. So what do you think the top reason is that you would turn the braking off on this? Go ahead, Jamie. You got it. If you like the guy shooting next to you, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is the purpose. If you like to be kind at yeah. gun range. <laughs> you respect your eardrums and your fellow shooters, then yes. Uh, and then I, I suppose night shooting, it, it could reduce some yeah. muzzle brake as well. Yeah. So. And and that was the point I was gonna take. Uh, <laughs> Davey's got the reins here, um, but yeah, for sure. I think the the signature for sure. So it, it's funny because um, you know we talked a little bit about that rifle that's sitting behind me, which is um, I test a lot of stuff. That if there's a if there's a weakness in a product, that rifle finds it, um, just because it's a 16 inch barrel um, right. and it's a 308. Uh, so I'm used to hearing a lot of muzzle blast <laughs> being oh, that 16 sure. inch barrel yeah but the top the top reason that chat gbt came up with was noise muzzle brakes can increase the volume of the gunshot which can especially be noticeable when shooting in an enclosed uh enclosed or indoor spaces mm -hmm. yeah indoor in range. some cases <laughs> yeah. in some cases shooters may want to turn off the muzzle brake to reduce the noise level especially if they're shooting in areas where noise restrictions are in place. And that can, that kind of goes back to, if you like the guy next to you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if not go full braking on an indoor range, yeah. They'll, <laughs> yeah. they'll leave. <laughs> if you want the range to yourself, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. They'll they're leave. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm excited to, to see or, and to hear about uh, kind of like your report on that as well, shooting on a 16 inch barrel with that 308, like what you could tell, what you could feel. I mean, I think that's absolutely. I, it, it, it's great. We'll, we'll go right into it. Since we're going to go right into Matador Arms, we'll start off with the regulator because this was actually the first product from Matador that I had ever used. And awesome. it, I love, I absolutely love this thing uh, right now. Just, testing a couple of other products. So that's why it's at, this is in my hand. But when I went out to go film this, uh, I was telling you guys offline that I did some uh, slow motion video. And what I did was I did slow motion video. And in, in the video, I did it with full braking and no braking. And then I had them side by, well, I was more top, top and bottom. And you could see in the slow motion because it was shoot, I was shooting outdoors, you could see how much the muzzle was rising, and how much recoil I was getting off of the rifle. You know, because I th uh, that was shooting when I did those. Those were shooting at like 240 frames per second. And mm -hmm. to give everybody an idea, we typically shoot at mm -hmm. 24 to 30 frames per second. And you could just see the difference of the muzzle rise on the exact same rifle just by turning the braking on and off. And it was amazing. I absolutely love this product. Um, and what I, the one thing I was always worried about it was, and for everybody on the audio side, I'm sorry, but I, go watch the video um, to see the stuff. I love how simple it is to take apart for cleaning. Because when I did that video, everybody was wondering about, you know, carbon locking on yeah, this thing. Yeah. And I shot, you know, I'm shooting a 16 inch barrel. So there's a lot of gas coming out of that barrel. Um, and I had no problem with carbon locking at all. And actually I still have yet to clean this thing. And really? I think yeah. I'm about 400 rounds through it. it we, we do get a lot of questions like that. And when you hold it and you kind of see how it functions, you know, it's like, you know, does it carbon lock, you know, what breaks on it? It's like, well, it, it kind of just doesn't. It's not. It doesn't. It, it, like, it, it just doesn't. It's easy to take apart. It's 
I, I don't see there's not really a break point. It's a very simple design. Yeah, so. the yeah. internal engineering of it, I think, is just so simplistic uh, is what helps it. And then just the difference between the actual muzzle and then the regulator itself, the outside guard, if you will, uh, is just that finite space. I think it's enough to allow a lot of carbon to escape if it needs to. Um, yep. So you're not getting that lock. Uh, very simplistic, but though. And the, the one thing I had, so, so, you know, and I was shooting up to 960 frames per second because I really wanted to see this thing in action. And the one thing about it, because being on a spring, the thing that went through my head was, OK, I'm going to have some recoils. You know, so there's going to be some impulse to the rifle. I mean, there's just no way around it. What's going to happen to this regulator? And what, ha what I saw on the video was this thing does recoil a little bit with the rifle so it's moving but it moved you know and then i was worried is the nut going to come off but that thing is recoiling so fast that that you're getting a little bit of movement that how could it carbon lock because as you're shooting it's got just a hair of a movement yeah. that it's it's not it's not staying still right um but yet it never it has never lost its setting on me which was amazing especially after seeing that, uh, like I said, the only way you could see that was that, you know, it, like, you know, I was shooting 960, uh, 900, yeah, 960 frames per second, which is really fast. Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, that was when I, or go ahead. So sorry. Uh, no, when I, when I film that fast, I only get 0. 0.6 of a second to film. Nice. I mean, yeah. that's because yeah. those files get so big. Oh yeah, yeah I'm just, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ruins your computer. You plug it in. Yeah, 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 like, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna upload this video, and I'm just gonna, I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, two day, yeah, two days later. Yeah, I was, uh, I was gonna ask. Um, we get feedback sometimes on the number. It's almost like a tempered metric, you know, a mattress. It's yeah. like, what's your number? You know, what's your number of clicks whenever you're doing this? What's your number of clicks doing that? But uh, did you find a happy medium, or did you just go open or yeah, close? I'm, I'm selfish. All open. All, all wide open. open all open. All open. open. Wants the range to I'm himself. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's it's kind of like uh, you know, it, it's just like right, well, first of all, I'm shooting out in the national forest here in Montana, so no one's around, so I can do that and and not you know piss anybody off. But uh, yeah, I, it's uh, it's all about my experience. I I don't care about the people around me. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a selfish shooter. I'll I'll admit it. Awesome, that's great. <laughs> that is great. But no, it's just it, it's just uh, you know when I unbox this thing, I'm looking at it going, ah, okay. I'm thinking this. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at it going. It's kind of gimmicky, and and then you know I put it on the rifle time. You know, time throw on my rifle, and then I the second I shot is. All open, honestly, this has been the best, best muzzle break that I've had. Really I've had a bunch of muzzle breaks. Yeah, that's great. Uh, <laughs> this has been the best muzzle break I, ha I have. And the ability to shut it off when I want to, or if I want to, you know, do half breaking, you know, yeah. turn it down to some half breaking, do some half breaking, get kind of the, you know, the, you know, the middle of the road. Right. Uh, or, you know, if I, if I'm three gun, if I decide to shoot heavy metal, uh, I might do some half breaking just so I don't blow out the RO's ears. <laughs> well, also, if you're just trying to find that, you know, sometimes you can over break a gun depending on yes. the round. Uh, so yep. it allows you just to click to the perfect setting, basically. Right. Yeah. And, exactly. uh, you know, it, one thing that doesn't get said, that click is satisfying. And that's what <laughs> oh, it is. It totally is. is. <laughs> I can click it. You're like, oh, okay. This is you tough. guys are sitting there talking, and I'm sitting here just, I'm yeah, just yeah. clicking <laughs> the damn thing away. It's, it's like it's, right now. This is my fidget spinner for the for the podcast. It's yes. the grown man's fidget spinner. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. It's, right? it's like a switch. The more switches we have, the better. You know. Yeah, uh, right. For everything. Yeah. Um, well, it, we're we're. It's wonderful to hear that you're enthusiastic about that product because we, I know this year, probably more towards the end of this year, we look to revamp that actual uh, regulator um, and even maybe. Might be a little bit of a challenge, but uh, even incorporate a three lug with that as well. So we'll see. Don't want to 
get too far ahead of ourselves, but uh, yeah, that's uh, it's in the yeah, you, the wheelhouse. You guys didn't tell me that at Shot Show. <laughs> I was about to say, I can't remember if we told you or not, but don't yeah. get you, too, guys, you guys held that. You guys hit that <laughs> one for me at Shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are looking to revamp. Well. Yeah, we do. We do like it a lot. But so. the, <laughs> of course, of course, <laughs> you could have told me, and I was just looking at another brand new product that is just coming out now. Um, I'm sorry. I, I think I did drool on that thing a little bit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, we got here. Yeah, here yeah. we got two. We got two of them here. Yeah. We have this one's mine, and then keep passing that Colt mag too. Yeah, of course. Thing. So this is that shot show. It's also our test gun. So it's just like, show not it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Colt mags here. For yeah. This one. They work with Colt. Glock, CZ, Scorpion, Max, MP5. Um, I like the way the Colt ones look, and you get the last yeah. round of open feature with that, uh, which is just <laughs> cool. And we're but working yeah, on that last round bolt open, hold open for all of them. Though. For, yeah, it's just the easiest with the Colt stick yeah. mags here. And do you have the Glock mag for that one? Uh, I don't. Most of them are all loaded in the car. <laughs> okay. Well, it's. I swear it's the first AR9 that looks good with a Glock mag. Uh, <laughs> weird about the angle that comes down. Uh, but if you pair our upper with uh, like an MK machining uh, pistol grip, it it's the lines flow correctly. Really well. So we like you that. See, and, and that was kind of the thing at shot when, you know, because, you know, I have the Monco 9. And I'll tell you, this is a this is fun. I, I absolutely love it. The, it. It's such a fun gun to shoot. Um, and of course, I have uh, the Mag X adapter in there for, for shooting some Glock mags. But um, you know, looking at the Monco Nine, it's utilitarian, right? Very monolithic, and and then go you know, and looking at the new ones, going, yeah, that's. I mean, the line. It, the lines and everything, the engineering that you guys are putting into them. I mean, that's a that's an awesome upper. I mean, just to look at Thank the you. looks of that thing. Thank you. It's a good deal lighter uh, than the Monco, even though it's uh, eight eight inch barrel. We wanted to have three M lock slots so you could fit lights, um, four grips, everything. So a little bit more space, um, and the whole trunnion system on the inside has been changed, which lightens it up a good deal. Yes. And instead of having that square back like you have on that yep. one, we wanted to yeah. make it a little bit match. more aesthetically pleasing on the yeah, back. Yeah, match the curve. Because that's the one thing. The first thing I picked up on it at, at, at shot was I'm looking at it going, okay, that, that slant is kind of um, AK-ish, right? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and I'm like, but it works perfectly on a lower. Because, yes. yeah, because you have this – you know, on the Monco 9, you just kind of have this cut. Yeah. And there's and, one accessory. If you get an SB Tactical brace, and there's like a cheek riser that KM3 Solutions uh, yep. makes, yep. and it complements it very well. Very we well. put that on all of our builds for the Monco. It'll give it a nice awesome. profile from yeah. that that uh, uh, brace yeah. all the way up to the rear of it. But there's something to be said too about the simplicity of the Montgo nine that you have uh, just with yeah. that uh, yeah. back. Is, well, is... and that's the thing is, it, it's it's such a simple design, really, uh, cool. and that's that's kind of the genius of it is there's not much to think about on this thing, right? Yep. I mean, uh, you know, first time I got it, I'm looking at it and I'm going, okay, how the hell do I move the you know the charge handle if I wanted to? And I'm like I'm looking at it and then. When I finally just pulled the screw out the back, pulled the guts out, and go, oh, that's how that works. Right. Um, it, it's it's it doesn't. Once you realize how to take the guts out of it, and it's only one screw to do it, you everything just falls into place. Because the first thing that I looked at was is when I pulled the bolt carry out, you still have the little uh, spacer up here that the charge handles on. I'm like, well, why is that not on the bolt carrier? And I'm like, oh, yeah, because that'll be cycling with the gun. And, yeah, that's just yep. asking for a busted thumb. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Non-reciprocating. We, we carried that over onto the uh, the Mat 9. Uh, right. And uh, currently, too, and not to get ahead of ourselves as well, but uh, it was one of the number one requested things from SHOT, uh, which was a folding charging handle. Um, so that's yeah. still kind of in the works. It'll still be non-reciprocating, obviously, but uh, to give it that even more low-profile 
uh, you know, picturesque uh, uh, readiness, if you will. But, so let me ask you something. How do you go? Oh, tell, tell me about the journey about going from this to that. This is <laughs> this is blood, my, blood, my, blood sweat well, tears. <laughs> well, if we both start crying, uh, you'll understand. But uh, yeah, blood sweat and tears is the easiest way to answer it. Money, uh, money, <laughs> 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 yes, uh, crippling debt of money. Uh, no, uh, this is one of my favorite questions because it has been quite a journey. Um, and and yes, uh, Davy gave you the shorthand answer. Um, but really, it it was a great po uh, product to begin with. The Montco Nine, very simplistic, um, very great following. The the operating system is amazing on it. Oper it's yeah. go ahead. Yep. so simple. Yep. It, it is. Yeah. that's its biggest pro. There, there's yep. nothing, nothing to it. Nothing to it. You look at it and you go, um, I think this is a joke. Yeah. You know, kind of like yeah. I mean, I'm no engineer, but I look at it, and I'm like. I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just two blocks. All right, cool. I know Legos. You know, the next thing you know, I got a gun. <laughs> but um, well, well, you get used to an AR, and then you go to something like that. You're like, yeah, that, that can't be. Yeah, I'm missing something, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. And um, but the journey itself has been uh, one of tears and uh, uh, yeah, uh, crippling amounts of money, but. Um, <laughs> It was taking something very simplistic like that and then just giving it some flair, you know, you, like just add a little flair. And that's what led us to one of the best in the business, if not the best in the business, is uh, Chris Morris, who is our engineer. He came on board uh, right before Christmas of 2022. Um, and he's the man, the myth, the legend to take everybody's input. Um, and then ironically, when people go, well, where'd you get the design? Well, not only does Chris have one of the best design eyes out there, we just listen to what people said. <laughs> and so a lot of times it's like, well, how did you come up with all this really cool stuff? It's like, well, we just read all the negative comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we just uh, applied that to paper. And then uh, yeah, we spent a, a large amount of money. And then here we are uh, with one of the best teams in the business, too. And, uh, and then you get this product here, which uh, obviously made its debut um, at Shot. And uh, we're just beyond excited. I'm excited. I enjoy this kind of this you know conversation because we get to share our enthusiasm with people such as yourself and all your guests and followers that just are as excited about it, if not more, than we are. So, and by the way, you are our first reviewer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. <laughs> like Number one in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what's funny is, is that, I mean, you know, the excitement of this was in the booth, the Matador booth at shop. Um, Cause Great. you guys were across, you were, you were across the bridge. Um, sure. And um, you got, you had some pretty big booths all around you, but everybody that stopped. Cause you know, I was, I, what I spent about 45 minutes in your booth just talking because I met, I got a chance to meet you all and, you know, talking to Chris about the design and stuff like that, you know, and uh, so in my day job, I do cybersecurity. And one of the things with, you know, with us is we, we look at, you know, we're observing, right. We watch things and we, and we, we look for patterns and things like that. And then as I'm sitting there, I'm looking around and everybody that came to that booth, there was high energy to everybody. Good. Um, yes. Everybody yes. wanted to see that product. All the employees had were just like, man, it took you about five minutes to feel like a friend in that booth. Perfect. Which that was is. which was awesome. I mean, that's that's you know, other than liking your products, I mean, that was one of the greatest things. And then it's so funny because really the way that this podcast is right now. This is the booth at shot. This is kind of the energy that was there. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if anybody wants to know what it was like at the Matador Arms booth, this is it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have a big team. So we're lucky in that sense where we have, you know, Alex, who's our, our marketing guy. He's also an owner. Yep. Um, and we have Justin. Did you get a chance to talk to Justin? I, he... I talked to him for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, good because he's in another country for a reason right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, he, he's overseas right now, Floyd. But um, he's he's a great guy. And then we have Chris. So there's just like everyone here is just a hundred percent in, um, and it's just 
I'm the luckiest person on earth. I get to work Same. with everyone that I that, <laughs> yeah. that I want to. Right. You, know, you know, so it's just cool in that sense. And Justin Gurley, actually, him and I were in the Marine Corps together. So, and then we worked side by side uh, at Department of State, and then now we're business partners in this. So it's just the the energy has been carried over uh, year after year for sure. Uh, and then obviously being this guy's uh, brother-in-law, <laughs> we <laughs> uh, like I said, we're like best friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what's funny is, is um, because of your work with the government, we, we tried doing this like January or February. Right. And then yeah. you were just you were just slammed. I'm like, right, we'll just catch up. We'll just catch up. Later. <laughs> Thank right? you for your It's like, yeah, we'll <laughs> you know, Alex it. is like, for sure. Yeah, Alex is like, well, I, I can't tell you what he does, but just understand he's not in the country <laughs> right now. Right. And I'm like. Okay, I'm, not, I'm just going to stop asking questions. Whenever we're ready, we're ready, right? <laughs> the the favorite my my favorite part about uh, the Department of State, other than the caliber of people I get to work with, is just the stigma that people add to it for me. <laughs> if I told you what I really did, I'm going to wait a second. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't have told me what you really do. <laughs> so I just sit here and let it be. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> just, just let everybody's mind run wild. wild. <laughs> Like, yeah, 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 yeah whatever. this guy, what, what a, yeah, what a dude. <laughs> he's actually a cook. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he's cook. Cook. <laughs> he runs around with a mop bucket. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, it's just funny. So, yes, sir. now you already kind of led on with there's might be some changes to the regulator. Now, mm -hmm. you're just coming out with that right there, right? The Mat 9 is just coming out. Are you already looking for what's next? Always. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We've got absolutely. We've got napkin drawings. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, know, like a bunch you guys of are sitting at the stuff. circle bar drawing stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this is made. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, no, we, we really do. One of the things that we shout throughout the office uh, quite frequently because we, we are all over the map sometimes and we have to, to rope that in because we get to hear. Um, the enthusiasm from all of our supporters and fans and people just in the industry and space. And uh, I think one of those things where you have to find like what you really, 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 truly enjoy and are, are adamant about um, in this this area. And obviously we're we're in the PCC realm. Um, and then from there to stay on course and to keep that hype that you're talking about. Yeah, we have a solid one year plan right now, all the way out to three years currently that awesome. we've already given the team thumbs up on. And it's very, very difficult through every conversation like this not to share it with you. But <laughs> yeah. no, no, I, 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 I totally get it. What, what's going through my mind right now is you're going, well, I spent so much money on this and you're asking me to spend more money on the next thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll figure it out. We just got to yeah. launch this thing as, as, at the end of the day. We're about like two weeks out from fully yeah. shipping. Four one is our our goal, which is is one of the things. That so we... April Fool's Day. You're going to launch on April Fool's Day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh man, I wish you would have said that out loud. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I I know one of the things in one of the things we like to do in Matador as well is we like to just be as transparent as possible. And one of the things too, is I know that we had a lot of conversations at shot uh, with all of our fans and supporters and things of that nature about February, 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 you know, that was the, the, the breakneck goal. Um, and due to a, a slew of reasons, uh, you know, or no excuse. Uh, we obviously didn't make uh, that goal. Um, but that's where, why we're working very, very diligently now. Uh, to get that out. And it is one of the things that we'll work on in the future when we look at uh, release dates. We're going to give ourselves a little bit more cushion. Yeah, <laughs> get a little, a little extra, a little something, something there, um, just in case, uh, because the last thing we want to do is be the company that says one thing and does another. We definitely do not want to do that. Um, but we do appreciate the patience. We do appreciate the support. It's definitely worth it. Um, and in all honesty, I got, I, I got to shoot one for the first time three days ago. Actually, so everybody else on the team and Chris, our engineer, has been shooting them for two months now. Blasted and, them. Yeah, blasted them. <laughs> I haven't even got to shoot one yet. And uh, they, got, I, 
the the guy that the guy that's taking out the fourth mortgage on his house to pay for this thing is the yep. last person to get trigger time on it. <laughs> Make sure the game, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's how I cry myself to sleep at night. Yeah, but that's yeah, how man. I get there. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny about this thing is it's the the test mule. So it's yeah. it's one of those things where I've worked in the gun industry for a long time. I get to get the guy, I get like first article samples yeah. and stuff like that. As a result, <laughs> none of my guns work. I mean, like you go through, <laughs> look at all these guns, it's like, look at all these cool guns. That. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. It's just a paperweight. Hey, we spent uh, $200,000 on the development yeah. of that, but uh, yeah, it just, it's the mechanics car. Yeah. You don't want to touch any of my guns. They're, they're all test it's, parts. It's funny you say that because uh, there, there's some testing, you know, I do testing services on the side that kind of help with help pays for all the stuff and um there's one company i work with it's a pretty large company that when they send me uh, a product i know the engineer the engineers get pissed at me right because <laughs> i will find you know i used to do beta i've mean, been in it for 25 years um I, and you know i've been banging away on computers since i was in third grade i, I if if i can figure if if i can break it I'll break it, right? I'll find a way to break it. And they'll send me the product. You know, I'll get this one product. It's like, hey, this is like one of three in existence. <laughs> okay. And then it's like, you know, it, when 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 it gets, it gets delivered, I'm out playing with it. And then like the next day, I'm like, here's 30 things you need to change, right? Yep. And there's like, shit. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, because, you know, the, the, you can only test so many scenarios, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, until you can get somebody to get, you know, they're testing indoor ranges and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there going, hey, you know, it's winter in Montana. It is currently negative five. Let's go. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's see if we can get this thing to fail. Right. <laughs> and well, people don't understand how long it takes to actually test something. Yes. Uh, yeah. And the process that goes into that. And then the engineering. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yep. a while. It's not just shooting out a range for fun. You know, yep. your thumb. No, it's. And if I you're mean, like me, I'll just break it in the first magazine somehow. Yeah, yeah. Got hands, the cursed hands. Uh, Everyone will run it great, and then great. I touch it, and it's just like, Pass man. it to Davey. And, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, that, and, and that, there's something about that, right? Because um, I, I I don't even have it here, but even on my phone, I wear I have otter boxes on my phone for a reason, <laughs> right? Like uh, I remember one time I had someone come up to me at, at one of my jobs, and they go, what um, what case do you have on your iPod uh, or your iPad? And I'm like, oh, that's an OtterBox Defender. I'm like, okay, cool. And they like just turn around, and walk away. I'm like, it's a really odd question to ask me, right? And then uh, like a month later, I find out why they asked the question because they were giving their like six year old an iPad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you break it all? The they're like, they, they just know burn. I break stuff, right? That's a long like, burn right there. Right? That's and they're they're like, they're like, yeah, like yeah. okay. Yeah. Like, if it, if it works for one. Jason, it's going to work for my six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, give me, give me something. I will figure out how to break it. <laughs> yes, and that's. uh that has been kind of the the process here um and one of the things is is obviously we want to give everybody a, a really cool really interesting really great product but uh safety is obviously paramount as always you know, oh, yeah. with firearms and that's I mean, been a little bit of the hiccup and so there was some things that you know with military backgrounds and things like that um that we were just if, let's go if someone's gonna buy this and like i use it for home defense yeah it needs to run right there can be yeah. no yeah you know, no doubt. And it's funny because it's the same operating system. But then when you go to run full production parts, one little thing is off here and there. And then before you know it, it's like, well, we got to rerun it. Right. It's the, yep. the nature of the game. To have that confidence for sure. Yep. yep. So we're it, almost it's funny. Parts ready to go. So, yeah. <laughs> and a new shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a new shop. And a new yeah. shop. <laughs> Which has um, been wonderful. And that's, oh, that's one of the things is. I look for reliability. Uh, you know, I'm what I, I'm what I like to call. I am a I'm a practical shooter, right? So when I show up, like for competitions, uh, I I currently run a, a Sig P320 X5. Um, I used to be a Glock shooter before that. Um, I 
I need the gun to go bang every time, right? So yeah, if I'm at like a, an Ipsic shoot or an, an IBPA or something like that, and it's so funny watching these people pull, come rolling up with Kimbers. And I was like, I, I totally can appreciate the fine machining of that, of that slide to the frame and stuff like that. But if you're going to run a 1911, give me one that has a little bit of wiggle in it, right? Yeah, because, absolutely. you know, I see those Kimber guys get halfway through a match and they're cleaning their gun. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at my SIG going, shit, I haven't cleaned this thing in like nine months. <laughs> yeah. It's still, yeah. it's still going, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's something to say about the reliability. You know, you want something and, to run and you got to make sure it's going to run. Yeah. You know, sometimes simple is better, uh, especially with the nine mil. You're already using it at close range. So yeah. it, it needs to go. Yeah. Boom. Bang. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, you're, I mean, let's face it. You're not taking, you're not taking one of these things out and banging steel at a hundred yards. No, it's not, it's, it's, it's not yeah. its purpose. Yeah. Well, you yeah. can, yeah. 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 Um, but that's, that's generally not what you're going to the range for. Right. right. Um, and that's the thing. It's funny. So you guys being in, being in the Marine Corps, riflemen first, right? Absolutely. So yeah. one of, one of my really good, one of my really good buddies here in Montana, also a Marine. He asked me one time, he's like, he's like, yeah, because I'm I'm very much a pistol person. I'm a pistol person. Yeah, I like to say I'm a pistol person who wants to be a rifle person, right? <laughs> and he asked me one time, he's like, okay, well, you have someone running at you, and you know, you have it on a table, you have a rifle and a pistol. Which one do you grab? Pistol. He goes, All right, they're a hundred yards away. I go, I got 75 yards to wait. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, he's just gonna be tired by the time he gets here. <laughs> because, Maybe he'll well, change then he's mind. shooting at you. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's shooting at you. Then I'm not gonna stand still. I, you know, I, I just know my limits, right? Um, and that's what I love about gun companies who understand they understand their product and what it is. It's not trying to be something that it's not, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then that's you know you're in the PCC realm with this with this gun, uh, and folding stock, and that's what I love you know. And I have one of your folders too, but um, with all the you know stuff going on with the ATF, right? Yeah. No one no one really wants to show a folder right now. But yeah. what I ended up doing, we'll show you one. We'll show you one. <laughs> yeah, no, you're showing one. Yeah. <laughs> what I ended up doing is um, to get around stuff uh, because this is um, you know bufferless. And which is why I asked chat B GPT the one question. Um, all I did is I just 3D printed a part and then really screwed cool. it in. Nice. Right? I mean, and that's literally what you can do. It's like I, I don't need a buffer. And, and, and what's really cool, I call this my modern day Han Solo gun. Oh, absolutely. it is cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it kind of looks like, you know, if, if Han Solo was going to have a gun, it's modern. Yeah. It'd be it's from Chicago. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I want that. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. So, no, um, yeah. and it's, just, it, it's a cool guy. I, I could not get this thing to fail. I mean, it worked. Uh, I tested it in the snow. I tested it in good weather, and I, I, I played with it. And I, I just love it, um, and it shoots so smooth. I mean, yeah, for a blowback, it, it, it really does. It is, yeah, it I, does. It, it's kind of SKS feeling ish, Ish, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. Know. almost has like a slap of like an AK kind of in yeah. a vibe, you know. Uh, I guess for yeah. you know that feeling, um, but it's that gigantic square. Oh, yeah, that's just it's got some weight. weight to it. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you it in the next version. Yeah. If you could give us an HK slap on this thing, you you got like a winner. Like everybody, everybody's gonna oh. want it, right? Uh, yeah, HK. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we have talked about something of that nature. Um, we think with the system we have now, the best we can give you is that folder, uh, yeah. The, yeah. the folding charging handle. Um, but we do have some projects in the works uh, here for middle of this year that we may uh, allow a sneak peek uh, of, and it may have that 
capability or that that coolness yeah. cool factor again you can't say too much <laughs> yeah yeah it, 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 it pains me to not be able to tell you all you just have to subscribe to our mailing list <laughs> that's right yeah. <laughs> well and what i'll do is i'll get the link from you and we'll put yeah. it in the comments uh, in go. the uh, in the description because everybody that is watching or listening i will have the links down below to get to awesome. these guys uh definitely go check them check them out because i mean it's just going back to the whole thing it's it's simple i mean it's kind of occam's razor right yeah you know the simplest solution is often the best and in an operating system i will always argue for that <laughs> yes yeah absolutely right. and uh, then you, the things too you're talking about like just knowing the the capabilities and limitations like of our weapon system and one of the things that we like obviously about the glock setup is that obviously when we talk about like law enforcement you know guys rocking you know the g19 or or nine millimeter caliber pistols is that their versatility they can go from their sidearm and their primary all in the same magazine and then with yeah. this weapon obviously uh only running about an eight inch barrel um you know obviously suppressed on this one uh fighting from a vehicle uh out into the open street and then even if they have to go internal and fight internal uh this weapon obviously exactly. serves a great 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 platform to do so Dual purpose, dual purpose. See, and that's the thing is on this, you know, with the X Mag, um, another product of yours. Um, yeah. You know, I was running the Glock 19 mags out of this. I had to go, since I, I stopped shooting Glocks a while ago, I had to go dig for a couple of Glock mags. Um, and uh, you also have the SIG X, X adapters too. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so for those of us that are shooting the three, the P320s, you can, you can do the exact same thing. I mean, yeah. it's like it's like you pick the two big law enforcement guns that are out right now and go hey we got you covered yeah absolutely yeah well and then absolutely. if you're running a kit you know yeah. you could run all same mags right. um yeah which is just awesome yes yep. big factor awesome. yeah and then uh let's see here i was going to pull something up on uh as my mouse disappeared on me mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go um i was going to I'm going to pull your website up real quick and let's let's talk a little bit about the website here. Oh man, uh, yeah, we're working on it. Al Alex, <laughs> our, our <laughs> president of marketing and media, better be watching right now. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why I wanted to pull this up because obviously we know about the Monco Nine, right? The Monco Nine's been out for a while, um, and but the thing is, is on and if I get my mouse to work again, there we go. There's your magazine adapters, right? So like we were talking about the, the, the Mag X, you can get this in two different flavors, either Glock or SIG. Yeah. Uh, muzzle brakes. We have the regulator, which, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm going to probably be putting regulators on everything right now. Yes, um, just because I, I love that thing so much. And then the folding sock adapter. We, we kind of hinted on this. Um, the one thing is, and I forgot to pull it out, and it's 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 below me here. The the side wonder here. The, the difference with this one is, is because you have a bufferless upper system. You these are this is solid because you don't need to to buy to pass the. Uh, you don't need to pass the buffer through it, uh, yeah. or not the buffer yeah. the bolt carrier through it. So, and that's what was kind of cool about this is you're like, hey, this works perfect. Gosh, this is really working awesome. So, yeah, yeah, you take your mouse off the, yeah. There you oh, go. Well, yeah, yeah, you can do it that way too. There we go. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Sidewinder, it's a, it's a lower cost solution for anyone that yep. has our upper or any bufferless system. Um, it's easy to adjust. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's a folding stock adapter. There's not much to it, uh, but it is. I mean, it's a nifty product yeah. to have. It's a great add yeah. for our product feature set. It, it works very well. Simple and sweet. Yeah, just we like most of, of our, our product. And, it, and what I like about it is, you know, you got the cost effectiveness, but like this picture here, it's on a shotgun. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. We don't need to spend a whole lot of money on a shotgun for a, a side folder. Yep. Um, which is, so, it, it's just so awesome. I, I, that's what I love about, you know, that that's what has me excited about your company is that, you guys are starting to think things through and you're starting to move them along in the industry where it's just like, yeah, we don't need boring stuff anymore. Right. 
we got yeah. we got something cool you, you need it we, we've got it um and then the one thing uh, i wanted to bring up because probably the least known product of, <laughs> of your line <laughs> yeah <laughs> sks sks parts yes yeah, yeah we move a lot of those sks optics rails actually yes um <laughs> it it's odd matter arms started kind of as an sks company and, and so that is especially up in canada what, yeah. what we are known for yeah. for sure so um you know people love tricking out sks's and we we kind of don't have the heart to get rid of it. it doesn't really match our product line or, or kind of like where we're going pcc realm yeah. yeah but it's just one of those things it's like we'll just hey, people keep buying them we'll keep making them, <laughs> yeah, we'll keep making them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's all it's already engineered right so uh, yeah yeah exactly yeah, we're, we're done here so um and that's the cool thing about it is um yeah you guys were talking is kind of earlier we we're talking about it's kind of sks ish and i'm like oh that's going to be a great lead in later for um for the uh for the sks parts because it's it's kind of weird you start seeing the matador arms you, know, you see the monco 9 the mat 9 the folding stock adapter you know the muzzle brake and then oh by the way we have these sks parts yes. um, <laughs> yeah which 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 probably pisses off all the ak guys right because ak guys hate <laughs> yeah. SKS. Yeah. <laughs> there's a little, little rivalry there um and but yeah, once you get this thing going streamlined though here soon. Uh, I know another thing that people have been requesting, which is the SKS, the chassis we used to have, which was the saber tooth chassis. And a lot of people don't know about that, but uh, is what probably once a week we get somebody to call and then go, "Hey, are you guys bringing the saber tooth back?" But uh, I don't, I don't know just yet. Uh, we have a lot, <laughs> yeah, a lot on our plate. yeah, well, a lot on our plate. Obviously, yeah. we're a little bit behind on the this release so we don't want to get too far behind um so we got to stick to the powerpoint as we say in the shop so wait well, you know what you could do you still like a once a year sale right like black friday we we have we have a hundred of these things right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. limited limited edition there coded right there you go. <laughs> once a year once a year, once a year. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't hurt. Yeah, wouldn't <laughs> hurt. And we do have some, I uh, think, even regulators. Uh, man, shame on me for not knowing the name. But we we had some regulators that we ended up taking off the site. We were talking today now moving back into the new warehouse. How, uh, warehouse. We might do kind of like a relic uh, section oh, of uh, Matador go. and kind of do kind of the same thing. Um, see what we have SKS-wise, compensator-wise. Good, good old-fashioned garage sale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Garage sale. Little, yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Shop it's, it's funny where um I, i've seen other companies like they'll they're they're like suddenly they're like throw a product up that you haven't seen in two years and they're like <laughs> well we had to move our warehouse and we yeah. found like crates of this stuff over here and then it's so funny the stuff like goes like that too you know yes yes um True. Yeah. well give us a couple more days we've been uh working night and day one to get this going uh on the foot it needs to step off on and then uh two we've been moving i have a short uh time here uh on this site um and so moving the warehouse to the new facility which has just been absolutely awesome uh we actually scrambled from there uh, from there to, to here to get yeah, on this yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, I gotta go home and shower yeah. I have, like, yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah, when I was talking, when I was talking to Alex earlier today, and he's like, "Yeah, we're we're in a warehouse with no internet right now." I'm like, yeah, yeah all right, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna run home and get, and jump on. Like, awesome, yeah. this is this will be interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after a whole yeah. day of working, I was like, "Yeah, Alex, give us like an hour and a half." Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, this meeting just looking just horrible, haggard. Yeah. <laughs> so now, previously the company was in Canada. It's now in Texas, correct? Yeah. Yes. San Antonio. Yeah. San Antonio, Texas. So, so I'm surprised I don't see any Texas flags on some of the some parts. <laughs> Not yet. We'll go full Texas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a South Carolina. Yeah, man, I'm a so. South Carolina. Oh. Man. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's one of those things where you just walk into a crowd of people and are like, "Who's from Texas? Let's just get it out on the air now." Because uh, you know, <laughs> you'll find out one way or the other, Texas. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Love it here. 
<laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, it, it's funny. There, there's there's a semi rivalry between Montana and Texas here, right? It's like who could be more gun friendly? And I've got a couple of uh, content creator friends that are down there in Texas, and I went, "How the hell did Montana get permitless carry before you guys?" Right? And they're just like, yeah, "Texas, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was like we've had it for six months, and you guys are still debating it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Texas. What's what's going on? We'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then again, you guys also have a lot of influx of. Well, we bo both states have a lot of influx from the left coast, um, and uh, it's just you just got you guys just yeah there you go <laughs> you guys just got hit a lot harder than we did. My, yeah. Uh, I am a California refugee. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh, man. Let me see. Can I can I bend over enough? No shame. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so, so it, it's funny because when I when we first moved to Montana, um, you know, and this was in 2000. People are like, you know, we talked to people like, oh, we hate these outsiders. My wife like, you realize we were outsiders. So like, hey, but we don't mind outsiders like you. <laughs> like, Wow. Okay. <laughs> hey, I, I, I came here before Joe Rogan, so I'm I'm, pr I'm a pre Rogan. Oh, there you go. You're, you're pre Rogan. <laughs> Man, we're just name calling left and right out here. <laughs> I'm, I'm coining that I, term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard it here first. I can, <laughs> I can see. I can see now after I upload this to uh, to YouTube, I can see that algorithm just going. I have no idea where to place this thing. They oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Delta, <laughs> uh, Rogan, uh, what, what's it called? West, West, or well, I forget. Left Coast. Left Coast. Uh, yeah, left Coast and, yeah, Texas. Yeah. They, they've got their own thing. Texas. And then, <laughs> and then, Secret and then the, you know, Department of State. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, right yeah we throw, we throw right some right the Marine. We throw the military in there. Nine millimeter jet GPT. That, that, yeah, jet. that algorithm's gonna go. I give up, man. I have no yeah. idea where to place this podcast. Well, I hope it works out where it just goes everywhere, and then that all comes back to you. That's what comes I comes back to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we've been rolling almost an hour here, and uh, you know, I, I know you guys have been working your butt off. Uh, so let's uh, let's tell everybody, you know, where to reach you. And uh, like I yeah. said, everybody watching or listening down in. The description below, they'll have links. Don't so if you're driving, don't pull over, or you know, or you can pull over, but don't worry about pulling over because you can just come back later and go in the description, mm -hmm. click the link, and they'll take you to their web page. Mm -hmm. So, how do people reach you? So we're at matadorarms.com, simple and sweet. <laughs> and then there we're you go. on yeah, on social medias, uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, and then you can you reach us directly too. Um it's just Zach at matadorarms.com. David at Matador Arms. If you're a gun store guy, uh, yep. owner, I, I handle the sales. So yep. hit me up. Awesome. Or if you're just drunk, you know. <laughs> you're just drunk. Going, <laughs> 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 just had to be in Texas and we only want to get the beer. You ever just want to talk while I'm crying? <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe help us move a warehouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, maybe one of these things will just drop off the back of the truck after we move. Maybe it won't. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. We, Anything yeah. can happen, right? Because it's not a because yeah. it's not a registered product. It's, that's it's right. the unlicensed <laughs> product. Yeah. So yeah. and I think that's also important to say is if you want your products, you don't have to go. I mean, you can order directly from you or from one of your dealers, and it's going to ship directly to your house. Because um, I think even Brownells carries your some of your stuff too. They do. So. Nope. so so yeah, this stuff just ships right to your house, and then as long all you need is the lower receiver, and you're ready to go. Yeah, if you have an AR-15, use our magazine adapter, um, yeah. and you're you're ready to roll. So awesome. it's fun. Awesome. It's, if it's your first build, this is the easiest nine millimeter build. Yes, uh, especially this Mat Nine, um, the new nine. one that's coming out, just because it works with every magazine. So you know, it, if that like, oh, I don't know what's compatible with what, the answer is yes this is yes. with it. so that, that makes would, it easy. well that's going to make customer service easy i have an ar-15 that runs uh, blah 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 blah. yeah yeah <laughs> but uh anything i need to know know about nope right. <laughs> just, just how to put it on that's about it yep. 
Absolutely. And also, too, it being budget friendly. Maybe you're just not in the space at the moment to buy a complete uh, new weapon. You can even if you already have an AR-15 at home, you can put the platform, obviously, buy the Mag X um, and then go from there. And then at 575, you're not breaking the bank for your PC. No, that, um, that, that's what's amazing about it right there, right? Yeah. We, I mean, we really work hard it, to make stuff affordable Every, yes. everything we do you know is to make it so you know you see some of these pcc's it's like three grand it's, I, i'm not paying that personally yeah. so yeah. But, yeah. you know well and that's the thing uh, is you know P, pcc became a thing right and mm -hmm. anytime something becomes a thing prices go up yeah yeah right like well, oh well well we're gonna take this 1500 dollars rifle and now it's 2000 did you do yeah. anything different no no <laughs> Mark it up. Yeah, <laughs> mark it up. Why, is it, why is it worth five hundred dollars more now? Yeah. We we call it we, because we, you won it. We call it boy. Yeah, the blue collar boy special, and it's uh, awesome. it's actually one of the things we're going to carry over on all of our products, or a majority yeah. of them. We're going to aim just like at Shot Show, and we're still well on track with all of this. Is to keep this upper. Obviously, we've uh, released that we're working on our own lower right now. Um, and then obviously that'll lead into a full weapon. And we're still aiming at the 999 out the door uh, mark That's uh, awesome. for PCC. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. That, that That's just cool. Now, then then what you got to do is get your own optic. And you see, you got all kinds of right. lines of business that you can go into. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's <on to> something. <laughs> You join our PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wednesdays at two. <laughs> Wednesdays at two, huh? Right. So, uh, well, anyways, since we've been running, let's why don't we start working on wrapping up? Let's yes, uh, let's let's finish up with a speed round. So the speed round is going to be five questions. Oh man. Four of them are going to be this or that, and the last question is going to be a thinking question. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh man. No, go warn you. <laughs> you go. <laughs> so, so it might. So if I see some smoke coming out of your ears, maybe I'll give you a hint. But I, I think you get it. But it's it, it's going to be. Let's just put it this way: it'll be a tough decision. It, well, I don't know. Sometimes I throw the decision out, and people like like that. But uh, let's uh, we'll we'll see what oh, you guys man. got. So 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 the first this or that is going to be easy because I probably already know the answer: pistol or rifle. Mm, both. both. <laughs> <laughs> Pistol. Pistol. Rifle. Rifle. <laughs> oh, you see, you, Zach, you call yourself a Marine and you said you're going for a pistol. <laughs> hey, that's what this is. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. You know what? I changed my answer. Yeah. <laughs> when you mean yeah. pistol, you mean that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you that's mean what a Mako 9 or a Mat 9. Not there you go. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll accept I'll accept that. I'll I'll right. I'll 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 leave I'll leave. I, I take back my my rudeness of, of <laughs> no your your your, uh, your jarheadness in question. <laughs> no worries. All right, nine millimeter or forty five. Nine. Twelve gauge or four. Twenty two. Twenty two. Twelve gauge or four ten. Twelve. Yeah, twelve. I'm okay. a big duck hunter. Yeah. <laughs> You good? All right. So since 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 you went twelve gauge, buckshot or slugs? Oh, slug. Mm -hmm. Buck. Yeah. Oh. Feel it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make him wonder. Yeah, yeah. wonder. <laughs> yeah, think for a little bit. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> it's funny. I had see. I had these targets um, that I got in, and they're you know the targets that you shoot through. And um, they were on the pod. You know, I, I met them at shot last year. Uh, she was on the podcast. We were talking about it. It's, it's uh, through targets out of New Jersey. And, um, you know, she was talking about her pepper poppers. And, I'm, you know, and we're, uh, you know, I had the web page up. And I'm looking at it. And I'm just sitting there going, man, that just screams 12. Uh, that's, that just screams one ounce slug to me. Right. <laughs> um, so so after the podcast, she's just like, you know, yeah, we're, we're talking a little bit. And I'm like. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. They, that pepper popper just screams 12 ounce slug. And she's, or not 12 ounce, well, 12 ounce. Yeah, 12 ounce slug. I'd be one heavy ass slug. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as, as coming out of like a, 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 point, a point one gauge shotgun. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. When does this <laughs> end? <laughs> that's, that's shooting with a howitzer, right? Um, so I'm sitting there going, I'm like, yeah, it's just screaming one ounce slug. And then um, I got some of these targets in. First thing I did was I took the Benelli out with one ounce slugs, and I'm just trying to beat the hell out of these things. I'm like, wow, these things held. Um, nice. But yeah, I just sorry. I, 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 I know you like the buckshot there, Dave, but I got yeah. I gotta go twelve. I gotta go one ounce slug. Yeah, yeah. I don't just, slug. There's no. a there's just nothing like hitting a target with a one ounce slug. <laughs> yeah, it really absolutely. <laughs> um all right. So for your thinking questions, you got yeah, I think both of you get the get the answer on this one. All right. I'm gonna take you to the largest warehouse in the world. Okay. And inside this warehouse is one of every gun that has ever been produced ever whether it was a prototype or a production gun <laughs> and you get to have one gun you get to walk out of there with one gun what gun what gun do you pick i um i don't know what it is i don't know why and out of all the amazing 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 firearms that are out there but i am absolutely beyond obsessed with the mp7 <laughs> and out of oh. all the guns you could choose all the amazing revolvers the guns that won the west that won the war that saved america you name it uh um that or like the m1 uh, like a paratrooper style m1 carbine that I, to me okay. that's just one of the coolest guns out there as well but yeah i probably my out of all the guns <laughs> okay <laughs> that's it that's all i got i hope you got it, something what, it was funny is i'm watching dave slowly starting to lean away from well me. i was just <laughs> well, you said, hey, you heard <laughs> Wayne, my answer when was you, yeah when you said when you said <laughs> Any gun that's ever existed. I was yeah. like, what was that gun that Lee Harvey Oswald used? Yeah. I really want that thing. But just kidding, there was two guns, so I can only get oh, one. Here we go. <laughs> 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 oh, if I had to go with one gun, uh, besides, of course, the glorious Matador Arms Mat 9. That's um, right. I don't know. I'm a big lever action guy. And so, actually, my brother-in-law gave me a 1964 Winchester lever action when I got married. Yeah. And nice. Uh, model, had, model 94? Yeah. Yeah. If I had to pull yeah. one out, I'd, I'd grab one of those lever actions. So, so my uh, my first rifle, so I was, uh, what, I think 12, um, was a, uh, a, a 3030, model 94, Winchester 3030. Um, love that rifle, man. It's just, absolutely. there's just something, there's just something it, it's light. The round doesn't beat the hell out of you, but yet you still got some power behind it. Right. I mean, it's kind of like, like one of the best designs of like all round functionality. And of course, at the time that was, you know, the beginning of the repeaters. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's just they're fun to shoot. I like the way they look. I don't know. Yeah. I'm a big Wild West guy, so I like Solid. that stuff. Solid. Yeah. No, it, I I I like that. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like having a Harley or or, or a Ferrari or whatnot. It has its own sound. And when you say yep. the model and the type of firearm, everybody's like, ah. everyone knows it. Yeah. 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 I got it's, you. it's it's like instant respect for that gun. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you got taste. Um, and I mean, yeah. imagine. Rocking that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Something kicks your door and it's like, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it, Not it's today. funny. Um, for, for one of my videos, because I also do gu you know, some gunsmithing videos when YouTube doesn't take, doesn't take them down. Um, yeah. I did a complete teardown and reassembly of the of actually my Model 94 that I had since I was a kid. Cool. And um, so, I, you know, I... I, I, they're, they're deep cleaning videos are not disassembly reassembly videos. Um, <laughs> and it's so funny, the comments, because, you know, everybody goes after my AR, my Glocks, my SIGs. I love that. But man, when you get, when I get comments off of that 94 video, people are just like, it's like, man, this is like my granddad's gun that, that left, you know, the, it got handed down to my dad that got handed down to me and he's like you hear about the, you know these guns that have just passed around like like you're saying you have a, a pre you know pre-64 yeah um there's something said like 
mine was built in the 70s, uh, like, like late 70s, right before Winchester repeating arms ceased to exist. Mm-hmm. You know, because when you start getting after, you know, after 64, you kind of question, okay, is it still kind of Winchester or is it not really Winchester? You get out of the 70s, it's, it's not a Winchester. Yeah. But yeah, you get to those older ones. Like, so I have uh, my Model 94. And then after my father died, uh, I have his Model 94. Um, actually, that's sitting in a gun case up in my wife's office. Um, so it's sad. I think she's got more guns than I do right now. <laughs> nice. Might have to solve that problem. <laughs> you got to work on that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, and I used to be an FFL. And uh, the, the thing about being an FFL is, you know, my wife got into my gun broker account one time um and her, her weakness her weakness is beretta like she wow. she's a beretta addict and um so she has she has a beretta 1915 so it's the first pistol i mean this gun's what now 100 and well 110 years old now almost 110 that's years old <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah so uh you know and, and she just She's like, <laughs> gun shows up. I'm like, damn, I, I need to start catching up with you. That's right. Yeah. You're in trouble. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I, like, I get a call from her one day. I was, I was at my, my day job. And she goes, I did something bad. I'm like, what'd you do? She goes, well, I was bidding on this Beretta and I got bid up. And I'm sitting there going, all right, how much did you pay? Well, I lost a bit. You know, I lost the auction. You know, somebody oh. outbid me. I'm, I'm sitting there going, all right, I don't see where this this I don't see where the story's going bad right now, right? Right. And she goes, "Well, then I found this Sig. It looked really nice." And I'm like, "Okay, wait." Well, she goes, "Well, it's a Sig 220 Equinox." And I'm sitting there going, "Okay, fifteen hundred dollar yeah. gun." Yeah. And she goes, "I'm sorry, it was expensive." I'm like, "Oh crap, what'd you do?" And she's like, "Well, I threw a bid in, and then someone else threw a bid in, and I was mad about losing the Beretta, so I'm like, figure I bid this guy up." And then I won. <laughs> Classic. Okay, yeah. right? Okay. Um, how much? Because I'm sorry, it was a lot of money. Uh, you know, because yeah, we if it's going to cost a certain amount of money, we talk about it, right? She, right. she goes, it's above that threshold. And I'm like sitting there going, oh god, what, how much is this going to cost me? And she goes, well, with shipping and credit card fees, it came out to seven hundred fifty dollars. Hey. And oh. the next thing, yeah. the next thing out of my mouth was, does he have another? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. And, and she's like, I don't know. I can look. Why? I go, you bought that gun like $150 under dealer price. I go, is yeah, it new? Yeah. She goes, yeah, it's new in box. I'm like, cool. and like, I pull the auction up. The guy forgot to put a reserve on the auction or, you know, a starting bid and a reserve. I'm like, oh, this guy's pissed. Oh, <laughs> he, yeah. he lost he lost a lot of money because yeah. he's out the price of the gun. He, you know, he sold it for $150 less than dealer price. Plus he's got auction fees, you know. I'm like plus credit card fee, and I'm like upside yeah, down. Yeah, like I feel sorry for this guy, but she got, got one awesome. <laughs> yeah, she got one awesome gun off of it. Absolutely, yeah, but, absolutely. Anyways, guys, you know, thank you so much for joining me, man. I, I I know you guys had a busy day, and I appreciate you taking time out of your day to to come absolutely. talk to us about Matador Arms. Dude, thank you so much yeah. for having us. Appreciate and, and it. it. Really, we'll. We'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we appreciate definitely. the opportunity. You guys are always welcome. And, you know, you guys just tell Alex, say, hey, look, you know, we're getting ready to launch something that Jason's not allowed to know about yet, but start scheduling <laughs> for after we can t- let him know. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get you guys on. We'll talk about the new products. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Every we time. appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Thank sir. You. That was a super fun podcast to record man i had so much fun talking to those guys and man it was definitely worth the wait because really for zach i was trying to get him on before shot and it was tough and then after shot it got busy now he's on and man that they just didn't disappoint man and i got a chance to hang out with those guys at shot show and i'm telling you they are high energy but they're super fun man they really are and they got some great products and, you know, we saw the new Mat 9 that's coming out. I got to play with that at shot. I, I think I drooled over it. They, they may have rusted because I had so much drool on those things. 
go check out Matador Arms, man. They, they're coming out with some new stuff. And um, I, I can't say enough. Like, I love the regulator you heard on there. I love the regulator. I do. I really love it. I think that is the best muzzle brake that I've ever played with. And I love the ability to change it up. You know, tune that thing down so I don't blow someone else's ear out. Or even mine, trust me. It, it, it gets hard shooting on a brake all day, even as a shooter, especially when I shoot with a 16-inch barrel. Super cool product. Now, for the product of the day, it is the Cheetah by Falco. Now, you can see here, I actually have my SIG P220 inside this holster, and I am currently seasoning the holster for this, for this gun. Um, I, I'm telling you, this is really cool with this retention lock on the back. Super cool because you got a leather holster that actually locks into the front of the trigger guard. And uh, you heard on the intro, I talked about etching. There it is. There's the logo etched into it. Super cool. They can also do initials and all kinds of stuff. It's a great product. I really, really love the quality of these things. Um, you're going to see some content about these holsters coming out probably in the next few weeks. Um, I got to carry them for a little bit. This one's currently being seasoned. The other one is for my Glock 26. That one's ready to go. Super cool products coming out from Falco. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, I have a video for you right there. Go click on that. That is all about bench mats. Now, it's kind of weird talking about bench mats, but trust me, there we need to talk about bench mats. Thanks for listening. Hope you're staying safe out there and look forward to talking to you again soon.